The Stryker ENT navigation system powered by Scopus software is designed with the ENT surgeon in mind. Now, surgeons can have more complete visibility for more complete assurance by combining standard of care electromagnetic technology with groundbreaking target guided surgery and augmented reality. To power on the ENT navigation system, press the power button in the bottom left hand corner of the console and ensure that the green light becomes illuminated. Once the unit has powered on, double click the Scopus software icon on the desktop. The patient loading screen will appear and you can now upload a scan onto the system. Note, when getting your imaging data from your local imaging provider, always make sure to follow the specific Scopus CT protocol. Images can be uploaded onto the system via USB, CD, DVD, PAC server, or local area network connection. From the data import screen, you can choose the scan you'd like to upload by clicking the respective icon for upload on the bottom left hand side of the screen. For example, when plugging in a USB to upload a scan, a USB icon would appear. When clicking the USB icon, the software starts to scan the USB drive for images and shows a list of image series available for upload onto the system. Once the appropriate patient is selected, Scopus will import that scan and bring you to the data import screen. The Scopus software has four primary components, the planning tab, the navigation tab, the message bar, and the side panel. The message bar will provide step-by-step -step guidance throughout both the registration process and during the navigated procedure, delivering detailed instructions around what the user should be doing next in order to complete a task. The various icons on the side panel allow you to load another patient scan, choose a registration method, zoom in and out, choose image capture capabilities, configure your screen layout, and adjust your CT contrast. With Scopus, personalize your screen layout with the Screen Configuration tool. Choose from a collection of layout templates, then easily adjust individual display view sizes and drag and drop the panes to your preference. Scopus offers a variety of pre-planning tools to enhance your surgical approach by extending the patient information with 3D objects. To access these tools, make sure Scopus is in planning mode. Then, click on the Planning Object dialog in the upper left-hand corner of any one of your views. Some of the available tools include Planning Points, which you can set up to be anti-targets or traditional targets, Bone segmentation, which allows you to mark parts of a patient's bone or soft tissue structure in a different color, and the building blocks mode, which allows you to map out the patient's frontal sinus anatomy with 3D boxes, as well as identify and highlight the frontal sinus drainage pathway using three-dimensional tubes. To select your method for patient registration, click on the head-shaped icon in the side panel. The ideal registration method is Enhanced Surface. Apply the Patient Tracker tab directly onto the patient tracker and place on the forehead with the cord facing away. Once the patient tracker is placed, utilize the Field Generator Alignment dialog box on the screen to ensure your patient tracker and field generator are optimally aligned. Now, you're ready for patient registration. Two points may appear on screen in your 3D view to demonstrate the first and second points where you will be tracing over the bridge of the patient's nose. If they don't appear, the message bar will display a note to define the initial path. First, select a point at the midline at the base of the columella and then a point at the radix. Scopus uses audio and visual indicators throughout the process. The message bar will visually display instructions to assist you with your current workflow. A progress wheel indicates the progress of that step and an audible beep serves as a confirmation tone for when that step has been completed. To check the interference level or to confirm instrument visibility, click the patient tracker status indicator in the top right-hand corner. Hold marker at point one until you hear the audible beep, and without lifting off the patient's skin, trace until you've hit point two, and you will hear a second audible beep. Continue moving the pointer over the surface in wide curves with a light feather touch. The more bony structures that are traced, the more accurate the registration. The white color in the 3D view highlights the most suitable areas for tracing. The progress wheel in the message bar indicates the progress of the registration, 
After gathering sufficient data points, you will hear a third audible beep. Hold the pointer on an anatomical landmark that is immovable relative to the anatomy of interest to confirm the registration. A progress display will appear in the message bar, and a fourth audible confirmation tone signals the completion of the patient registration. All completed registrations are stored with the planning and can be reused without the need to re-register the patient. To reuse a previous registration, ensure you are in planning mode. Press and hold the left mouse button on the navigation tab until the Reuse Patient Registration dialog box appears and select the registration you would like to use. After registration, you can remove your registration pointer to free up a port for other instrumentation. The Stryker ENT navigation system has a comprehensive portfolio of instrumentation that provides flexibility and precision to your ENT procedures, including instrument clamps to navigate nearly any rigid surgical instrument of your choice, curved and straight suctions, and a malleable probe for locating critical anatomy. The TGS Guidewire enables navigation during balloon sinus dilation procedures when using the Express Low Profile device. To prepare the Express Low Profile for use with the TGS Guidewire, first remove the light fiber. Next, insert the TGS Guidewire into the working lumen of the Express device. Secure the Guidewire bayonet connector to the lure fitting of the Express device, then connect the plug into the navigation system. The TGS Guidewire, precision pointer, and suction tubes are plug-and-play, so no calibration process is required and they can be used immediately after they are plugged into the system. To connect the universal or sphere clamp to a rigid instrument, unscrew the fastener counterclockwise, press and hold to allow for the surgical tool to be slid through the opening with the wire facing toward the user. Tighten the fastener clockwise until the clamp is securely connected to the navigated instrument. To initiate instrument calibration, bring the instrument and clamp into the view of the field generator. Once the clamp is recognized, a dialog box will display on the screen that will provide visual instructions on next steps. Next, place the tip of the instrument into the cone on the patient tracker and hold until the software completes this step, indicated by the progress wheel in the top right corner and the confirmation tone. Then, place the tip of the instrument on the flat circular plane next to the cone and wait for the software to complete this step using the same indicators. Once finished, your instrument is ready for navigation. If you want to use the same clamp on a different instrument, or if the clamp moved during the procedure, you can reset the calibration by holding it upside down over the patient tracker to open the reset dialog. The registration pointer and patient tracker both use red plugs and are disinfectable. Aside from these disinfectable instruments and the single-use TGS guide wire, other Scopus instrumentation is intended for a maximum of 10 uses. When these instruments are plugged in, a message indicating the number of uses appears.